you've built a Next.js website and now it's time to deploy, but which option do you pick? So you have broadly three options when it comes to hosting Next.js website. There is static hosting, so you can do a static export. You can go for managed hosting, for example, with Vercel, and you can also do self-hosting, for example, on a VPS. So we're gonna compare each option here by looking at how expensive they are, how easy they are, and if all of the Next.js features are supported. So let's take a quick recap to see which features Next.js has again. So Next.js is a full stack framework, right? So we have both a client side as well as a server side. So the core of the server side is server components, server actions, and these route handlers, basically API routes. But there are also some other features like middleware, streaming, the image component, dynamic routing, and caching. So let's see which options that you have for hosting actually support all of those features and which don't. Now hosting is a commodity these days. So you'll typically be choosing between very cheap for just the essentials or a little bit more expensive for some specialized features. And by the end of the tutorial, I'll actually show you how to deploy a Next.js application to a VPS hosted by Hostinger. And they are also today's sponsor. So I actually have an example application here that has the core features. So this is just a homepage and there is also some routing here. So if I go to the hello page, we have some output here from a server component, from a server action, client component, as well as a route handler. So very quickly, how does that look like in the code? Here is my homepage, very standard. And then I have that hello page right here. This is a server component. I have async here. So I say hello page. This is a server component and it's actually getting a result from a server action, right? So I'm invoking a server action here. It's just returning a string here. That's what we output here. Then I also have this client component, right? Client component. And this is actually making a fetch call to a route handler and it will get a result. And that's what it will just output right here, right? So I have that route handler right here, route.ts. So these are like the core features of a modern full stack Next.js application. Not important to understand how everything is structured here. We're just going to use this as an example to see which features are supported by which option. Now, before you push your app to any of these options, what I like to do is actually just run a local build. So here in package.json, typically for development, we run npm run dev. But if you want to create an optimized version for production, you can run npm run build. If you run this locally, you can already fix some issues before you even deploy it. So it will actually check the types and linting, and it will give you some useful information here about your page as well. So I have this slash hello page. You can see it's a static page, meaning it can just be cached on a CDN. It's just an HTML file. So whenever there's a request, it can just be served from a CDN. If it was a dynamic page, whenever there's a request, it would have to be computed on the server side. So typically, if it's possible, we actually want it to be statically rendered. So I can double check if that is indeed happening correctly also for the home page. So I like what I see here. And now I can choose one of these options and actually push my app. So let's say we want to do static hosting. So we can do a so-called static export. And the only thing we have to do for that is just go to your next config and specify output to be export. So if I have this and now I run npm run build again. So now what I actually get is actually this out folder because for the static export, you just get a bunch of static assets, HTML files, CSS files, and some JavaScript files. So here I have my index.html. This is the home page, And here I have that hello page, right? So I can host this wherever you can host static assets like S3, for example. I can put a CDN in front of that and it's just like hosting any static asset. And with this option, you will not have a server running in the background. So you lose those server side features. So you can see here, these are all the features that are not supported when you go down this route. So this option is very cheap because you just host some static assets. There's no dynamic compute on some server. It's pretty easy, right? It's just hosting some static assets, but a lot of those server side features simply won't work. So all of those features that we just saw, they will not work with a static export. So you will not have a server server in the background. So everything will be running client side. So it's basically like a React feed app or create React app. So static hosting is maybe an option if you have, let's say, a portfolio website, a simple website that doesn't need server side compute, basically only displays information. There are no backend features necessary. So typically we do want to have a server side so that we can keep those server side features. So in practice, most people actually do end up with either of these two. So now Next.js is actually just a Node.js application. So wherever you can run Node.js is also where you can run Next.js. Let's take a look at managed hosting. So another word for them is actually platform as a service. So the popular ones are for sale or Netlify. They integrate with your GitHub. So when 
whenever you push to GitHub, they will automatically run that npm run build script on their server and they do certain caching to speed up the build. Now Next.js as a framework is actually backed by Versal. So they have full support for everything. And then they as a platform provide some additional features and they charge money for that, right? So their business model is about providing additional features and in return, there is a price tag. So for example, Versal does not allow you to host commercial projects on their hobby plan. So the minimum for a commercial plan is actually the pro plan. And it can actually get quite pricey, especially as you start to scale. And in return for that, you get certain features like preview deployment, you get a CI CD pipeline essentially out of the box. And they also have a so-called edge network. So you've probably heard of CDN. So if I have an, a simple HTML file, like from a static export, I can put that on a CDN. So my HTML file is just distributed to multiple servers around the world. And so that file can be served very closely to the user. So it's very fast. Now CDN is typically for static assets like HTML or CSS or a JavaScript file. But what if you have some dynamic compute, like for all of these server side features that we have with Next.js? Well, that's basically the edge network, right? So edge computing. It's basically a CDN, but for dynamic compute. That's what you get out of the box with Vercel as well. So these managed hosts are typically not cheap, but they are easy and they do typically support all features. Now there is one thing that you need to know, which is that Vercel and Netlify, they are so-called serverless. So they don't have a, what's called a long running server waiting in the background. So what Vercel does behind the scenes is actually just spin up a bunch of AWS Lambda functions, right? So it's a serverless platform and they have certain downsides. So sometimes you'll have what's called cold start. Things like web sockets may not work easily out of the box. You may run into timeouts if you have tasks that take a long time. Also, you don't have a persistent file system. So if you're using SQLite, for example, which is actually just a file part of your file system, that may also not work out of the box on a serverless platform. But generally speaking, the typical features are supported and there are some other specialized features that you get access to. And in return for that, there is a price tag. And typically it is very easy to use. So typically this option is best if you are a beginner or you have a lot of beginners on your team or you need access to a certain specialized feature. So with this option, you're really paying for a smooth developer experience. Now I should also mention the buzzwords that you'll typically hear about are like SSG, SSR, and typically also ISR. So SSG static site generation is actually what we just saw with the static export. You get a set of pages that are already generated. We don't need additional compute during request time to get the page. And right? that's what we saw with static export. That's SSG that's supported by this option. That's also supported by the managed hosting. So SSR is when you do need some dynamic compute during request time, right? So here, for example, right, so you may have a page component. Typically these are server components and maybe in there you need access to the locked in users information. Right? So depending on who's logged in, you're going to render a different page. So that cannot happen statically. You cannot do that once during a static export, right? because it depends on the current user who's logged in. So that requires dynamic compute. And right? so that page needs to be server side rendered during request time. That's typically what people mean with SSR. That's supported by managed hosting as well, but not by static hosting. Now, typically you also hear about ISR incremental static regeneration. So it has more to do with this actually. So let me actually move this over here. So SSG is when you create a page just once. Let's say I have an article page that's just a bunch of text. It doesn't depend on the logged in user. We can just generate that page once and we just put it on the CDN. That's optimal for a page like that. But what happens if that article actually changes? Maybe the writer made a mistake. We need to update the content. If you update the content in a CMS, for example, that CMS can then send a webhook to one of our route handlers and the route handler can then regenerate the HTML of a page. That is essentially ISR. That's also something that requires compute during runtime, right? So that's also not supported here, but it is supported here. So that's managed hosting. So now let's talk a little bit about self hosting. So we're really going to take matters into our own hands and there are certain benefits to that. Now I do want to mention that if you do want to keep a platform like experience like for sale, but you do want to host everything yourself, there are some options actually like Coolify and SST. So that's maybe something you want to look into if you want to go down the self hosting route and you want to get a similar experience as Netlify or for sale. So I know that a lot of you are actually interested in in hosting your Next.js website on a VPS, a virtual private server. Now, what is a server actually? A server is just a box of electronics, right? Somewhere in a data center somewhere. We could buy that physically ourselves and like actually ship it to our homes and actually put the Next.js website on there. Now, there are many downsides to that. So typically you wanna rent one from a company like Hostinger and we can rent an entire box or right? the entire hardware just for ourselves, a dedicated server as they call it, or we can use a so-called VPS, which means 
that we get a lot of control over this box essentially there may be other people also using that hardware but the experience is very similar as to owning the whole box yourself so you can set up your own operating system and things like that so it's very similar to a dedicated server but it's cheaper than that and just to quickly show you how that looks like so here i have my vps and i get an ip here and don't worry it looks complicated here i can then open up a terminal but this is a terminal window is the exact same as the terminal window in here but just outside and then here i can do ssh to log in there and set everything up i'll show you how that works in a second let's actually finish the table here first so typically a vps with hosting or can be pretty cheap it depends on the specs of the server that you want to rent but typically you don't get expensive features out of the box you get a more bare bones setup and as a result of that it's cheaper now is it easy and i put a question mark here because it really depends on the experience level of the developer for an experienced developer it shouldn't be too hard to set up a vps for hosting a next.js website but for a beginner it may still be a bit tricky are all next.js features supported and actually yeah because we will actually have a so-called long running server in the background it's just going to be some server that will always run it's not serverless it's a so-called long running so with this one actually you will not run into issues of cold start you can use websockets you can have tasks that take longer than five minutes so there are some benefits of having a long running server generally all of these features should work perfectly fine and it's also true for these buzzwords and so these also work when you use a vps so this option is mostly interesting for experienced developers now how would you prepare your next.js website for that so here in the docs they do mention self-hosting here with a couple of options so actually static export is technically what we looked at here is actually also self-hosting you just don't have a server running in the back end so if you just want to run it as a node.js server you can actually just well copy over all of your files onto a vps let's say and then you can just run the build and then you can run npm run start to run that production build and then you can use nginx and pm2 to set everything up correctly i actually have another video with the hosting or vps in which we do exactly that now the other option that they give here is actually with docker and i actually found that it's actually easier with docker and i know that a lot of you want to deploy it with docker so i will give you a very quick example of how we can have this next chance application dockerize it and then actually host that on a vps and don't worry if you don't know anything about docker it's still helpful to see how that would work so here we have that server component server action client component route handler let's see if all of that still works in a docker container on a vps now next.js actually shows you how to do that they have a docker image example here so if i go back here to next config here i can actually change it into stand alone it will execute a server.js file that can then serve our entire app and what may also be a good idea is if you're using the next.js image component to install the sharp package I have the Docker desktop application here on my computer. So when you Dockerize something, you essentially create a Docker image as it's called. To do that, I can just create a Docker file, no extension. And Next.js will actually tell you what that Docker file contains. So here they actually have a Docker file. I'm actually just gonna copy that and paste that here in the Docker file. I will also create a Docker ignore file. This is similar to a .git ignore. Now I can create a Docker image out of our application. So I can say Docker build from the Docker file in this directory. Now that Docker image that we'll get we need to put that on our vps and you cannot just push it directly to the vps instead we're going to push it to a container registry first so docker hub is a container registry but we actually also have one on github under packages here we can push our docker image and this is also where you would push your npm packages now for the tag or name i need to make it a specific name to properly push it to that container registry so that container registry is actually called github container registry.io and then my username on github bytegrad and then a more casual name example next.js app and then i give it some version tag latest now i'm on mac and my vps will be running on linux ubuntu that will be an amd64 chip now my mac has an arm arm64 chip so i need to specify that i want to build this image for linux amd64 all right so that may take some time it will create a docker image which will contain everything that is necessary to run our next.js application so all the dependencies it will just be confined within that one docker image so then i can send over that docker image well to somebody else or to my vps that's why docker has become so popular because it's very portable the application 
will run the same everywhere. All right, so after some time that is finished, now if I go to Docker Desktop, you can see I have a Docker image of my Next.js application. To push there though, we do need an access token, which is essentially something you need whenever you wanna do something programmatically with your GitHub account and need access to write and read. Now I can log in. Now I can log in, I can say Docker login and which container registry, well, it's this one. I can use my GitHub account name. And then the password is actually that access token. I copied that, I paste it right here. It won't show it in the terminal. And now I can say Docker push. All right, let's see what we get. Now you can see we have another package here. We can pull this Docker image onto the VPS. So here in Hostinger's dashboard, I can get the IP address and I need to SSH into this. All right, I type the password, you won't see it, but now you can see I'm logged into the VPS. So I just ran clear. And actually the first thing we wanna do is probably just update the Ubuntu packages. So we get the latest version of the Ubuntu packages. And then we can install Docker. I will use docker.io. All right, so after that, we should see something. Now in the world of Docker, there's an easy way to check if everything went all right, which is just to try running a Docker image called Hello World, which is hosted by Docker Hub. So locally it's not installed, so it's gonna automatically find that one from Docker Hub. You can see this image confirms that the installation is successful. We need to make sure that we can log in because it's private. So then we say ByteGrad and then we need the access token again. I will just paste that right there. I'm logged in. Now I can actually just try running it. It will automatically pull it from that container registry. Can't find it locally, but it will automatically try to pull it from the container registry. All right, so after some time, you can see the familiar Next.js logging. And so here we should now be able to use the IP address of that VPS. Now remember, it's port 3000. So let's see what we get if we go there. And now we can see our Next.js application running on that Hostinger's VPS. Let's actually go to that hello route so we can see if all the features are still working. And you can see all of the core Next.js features, server component, server action, client component, route handler, all of that is still working here. We can set up DNS so we have a nice clean domain name. We can configure SSL right, and add other features as well. A lot of that can be done here within Hostinger. So you can see self-hosting on a VPS is a very realistic option. I would say it's mostly interesting for experienced developers that are not willing to pay the premium for managed hosting. So make sure you check out Hostinger for their VPS offering in that case. So if you go to hostinger.com forward slash ByteGrad, they've even given us a discount code. So here they show you the options you have. This should be more than enough for multiple Next.js apps, even if you're including the, the database with them with, for example, SQLite. Now it gets even more attractive because if we scroll down here, you will also be able to add my coupon code. So if you go here and you type ByteGrad, you can apply that and you get an even a more attractive price. So when you buy a VPS, you'll go through an onboarding process. Let me quickly show you how that works. You can just start here and you can pick a location for the VPS. So it's actually a Lithuanian company. So maybe that's why they put it at the top. But what I usually do is just pick the United States. I'm actually going to go with this one. So I'm going to go with Cloud Panel here and Ubuntu. So I'm going to click continue here. I'm not going to install anything in addition right now. So I just typed in my panel password. All right, so then here we need to set up a password so that we can SSH into our VPS, right? So that's how you will access your VPS. Okay, so I just added a password. I'm gonna continue here and we get a nice overview and now we're gonna finish the setup. All right, so then we have our VPS information right here and they will also give you this IP address, which we will use to connect to our VPS as well as when we go to the browser to visit our application. I wanna thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video and I wanna thank you for watching this video. I'll see you the next one, bye.